Hello learners, welcome back to Constant Learners. In the previous video, we understood what data database and database management system meant and how they are linked together. In this video, we will discuss how databases are created, how DBMS is used to manage the data in databases and what are the components of database management system. All right, let's get started. Now we know that data are raw facts. Correct? And when this data is in a particular format, we call it structured data. Correct? Now this data needs to be stored somewhere. Where is this data stored? Inside the database. This we have already discussed in the previous video, right? So database are the storage houses for storing the data. But then there are two conditions to be able to store the data inside the database. The first one is the data has to be related. That is, we cannot store any random data inside the database, right? And it must be about a real world entity. Correct. So the data has to be related to one another and it has to be about a real world entity. For example, the database about a hospital. So a hospital has real world entities and all the data inside the hospital like uh, let's say about the doctors, the nurses, the wardens, the patients, the finance, all of this is related to one another because all of it is about just one single entity that is the hospital right this data can be stored inside the database similarly a college database it has data about the students the professors then fee structure salaries all of this can come under the college database so the data is related to each other and the data is about the real world entity right now these databases have tables called relation because the data is structured and this data is related to one another, it is stored in the form of tables which are known as relations, okay? So, if we have a database about hospital staff, it will have the data and the tables about doctors, nurses, patients, their timetables, their uh, specialities, finances, etc. Right? The columns inside the doctor table will be uh, their name, their phone number, doctor ID, their gender, age, then uh, their specialty, their timings, like what time they come, the days on which they come to work. So all of this can come inside the doctor's table, right? Then we get to database management system. This also we've already discussed in the previous video. What is database management system? Database management system is a set of programs or a software that provides us with tools and interfaces. And why do we need the software and the tools and the interface? To manage the data. and the data bases. So database management system provides us with tools and interface to manage the data as well as the data bases. So it is managing both, not just data, not just databases, both data and the database. And DBMS is also used to create the databases, to create the tables in the databases, to modify the tables in the databases and to read, store or update the data inside the tables all right now this brings us to how exactly our database is created we've already discussed all of this in the previous video this was just a revision a short revision if you haven't watched the previous video and if you don't clearly understand what we have discussed in this part then please watch the previous video i will link it below in the description box okay now let's understand how exactly our database is 
created, right? Now, before creating the database, we need to identify the purpose of our database. That is why exactly are we creating the database, right? We cannot just randomly decide to create a database and build the tables the way we like. No, we need to identify the exact purpose of our database. Like whether we are creating the database for a college, a school, a hospital, an office, etc. Right? Let's say here in this example, we are creating the database for a college. Correct? Now, after we have decided the purpose of our database, we need to think about the tables that we will need to create. Right? So, after the purpose, we get to the tables. This is just a very... Uh, superficial overview of how databases and the tables inside the databases are created. This uh, structure or this construction is extremely vast and detailed. The engineers, they sit together, think about what exactly are the needs of the uh, project and how exactly do we need to create the tables and the databases, right? This is just a very... A superficial outline of how a college database should be created. All right. So then we think about the tables that we need to create. For example, in this case, we might need the table for professors. Correct. Then we need the table for students. Then we'll need the table for, let's say, finance. Correct. Then fees. Then there could be a table for courses etc okay there can be multiple multiple tables for one single database and all of these tables will be related to one another see the data inside one table of course is going to be related but the data inside different tables are also related in some way or the other like the professor's table can be related to the student's table like which professor teaches the students of a particular course, right? Similarly, the professors can be related to the courses table also. All of this we will discuss in the further videos when we get into the depth of databases and how the databases are created. Here we are just discussing it in short, okay? Then once we have decided of how many tables or which tables we will require, the next thing that we need to consider are the columns in each table right for example right now i'm creating a table on students okay let's say we are creating the students table for students table what all columns can we need we can require a roll number column for students then we can require the name of students gender age okay then which course are they enrolled in then city from which they belong then maybe their mobile number okay and a lot more right we can require a lot many columns now there are no restrictions on how many columns a table can have okay we can have as many columns as we like and we can also modify the table later on as per our requirements like for example later on i realized that i've forgotten to add the gender column then i can do that later on as well all right we can modify the table later on as per our requirement it's not mandatory that we need to define the exact perfect table at the first instance itself right so now we've decided the names of our columns and after this we think about the type of each column now what is a type of a column that is a type of a column defines what value the column will hold that is if it is going to be an integer or is it going to be a character column or is it going to hold uh, let's say money or is it going to hold date and time right like for example for birth dates we can add date and time for uh, names we can add characters for roll numbers we can add integers for mobile number we can add integers so we also need to define the type of each column right then we also declare which column is going to act as a primary key so mostly the ids or the numbers act as the primary key so here in this case we can consider roll number as our primary key all right then we also declare which will be the 
uh, foreign key and how the columns or the tables will be related to one another. All of this is declared when we are creating the tables, right? Then if you don't understand all of this, please don't worry. We will discuss all of this in further videos, okay? Then we can also choose whether a particular column can stay empty or not. That is null or not null. We need to declare this while creating the column. Like a roll number column, if it is a primary key, it can of course never be null. So we will declare it as not null. Name will also be not null. Let's say for now, course can be set as null. Because sometimes what happens is when we are taking the admissions, at that time we are unable to decide whether we are going to take CS or IT. So we can keep that column null for the time being until the student has decided whether he wants to take CS or IT. Alright. Then there's a lot more that needs to be considered. Thus, it's not hard and fast that we need to create a perfect column or perfect tables. We have a chance to modify them later on. Right. But we need to remember here that we're talking about structured data. Okay. I told you in the first video itself that all of this we're doing for structured data because unstructured data is not in a particular format and it cannot be stored in the form of tables. All right. Now, I hope that this was clear. So we've already decided what our database is about and what it will look like. This was all about planning the database. Now to actually create a database, we need to use a programming language. All right. And the programming language that we mostly use is structured query language. Okay, so structured query language is the programming language that we need to write SQL queries. The programs that we write in SQL are known as SQL queries. Okay, so we use SQL queries to create the database to manipulate, change or delete the database, to read the data from the database as well as to store, manipulate or delete the data inside the database. For all of these tasks, to perform all the tasks that DBMS is performing is actually performed using the structured query language. Okay, so whatever we want DBMS to do with the databases and the data inside the databases, we need to command it using structured query language right now where exactly do we write these queries see now sql is used to perform the tasks right perform the tasks on the database and on the data but who actually is performing the tasks to manage the databases and the data it is database management system right so we write the queries we write sql queries on the interface provided by database management system. All right. So whatever interface is provided by database management system, we write these SQL queries on that interface. DBMS identifies those queries, understands them and performs the required task. All right. So DBMS is actually performing all of these tasks of creating the databases and managing them. We are just using structured query language to explain the databases, uh, sorry, to explain the database management system that what task we need to perform. Because of course, the computer and the system cannot understand the English language, the language that we speak, right? So we need to uh, speak to them in their language, which is structured query language. All right. So DBMS is providing us with an interface and it is also performing all the tasks that we need to uh, perform to manage the databases and the data inside the databases. OK, so DBMS is performing two tasks. It is providing us with an interface wherein we write the SQL queries. Then it identifies those queries and performs the tasks, uh, the respective tasks on the data basis all right i hope that this was clear now we know that databases are the homes for data and inside these databases we have tables wherein the data is actually stored all right and we are doing all of this using database management system all right 
but we need to understand this very well that this data is not being stored inside the database management system and the databases are not being created inside the database management system all right dbms is not creating the databases inside itself right it is just providing us with an interface and it is just performing those tasks the databases are actually being created inside the database servers or cloud okay the data is actually being stored inside the servers or the cloud okay the data is not present locally around us or on our system it gets stored either on the database servers or on the clouds and dbms performs the tasks of creating the database inside the servers or on the cloud okay it is not doing it inside itself for example a management system at the office so management system manages every person uh, or every position in the office like it takes care of whether the ceo is performing his task or not whether uh, the development team is present in the office or not who is coming to work who is not coming to work who is getting the work done on time management system is not performing all of these tasks it is just taking care or it is just managing the different aspects of an office all right now to give you an example of how structured query language works i'll show you a very simple query to create the database okay now structured query language is a very simple programming language it just requires a basic understanding of a few keywords okay and just knowing the english language is enough to be able to communicate with the databases all right at least for the basic to perform the basic functions that is enough of course when you're trying to be a database engineer it's going to get a little uh, complicated but it is also very uh, interesting when i worked as a database engineer i really enjoyed uh, creating the queries and communicating with the databases so it's very interesting if you get into this i'm sure you'll enjoy your work let's say i want to create a database right so just in simple english language i'm saying create a database similarly when we write an sql query we simply write the keyword create okay now what are we creating we are creating the database okay let's say the name of my database is constant underscore learners okay and a semicolon in the end because sql queries always end with a semicolon all right it is as simple as that it is a simple sql query so where do we write this sql query on the interface provided by database management system and database management system identifies these queries it identifies the keywords understand them and performs the required tasks with the database all right we will learn other queries in detail when we start with structured query language right now we're only discussing the database management system i hope until now everything was clear now to understand all of this in detail we are going to take the example of amazon's shopping site but before we get there let's first discuss the components of a database management system because then it will be easier for us to understand how amazon works and how dbms and database communicate with each other components of database management system so the first and most important component of dbms is of course data that is stored inside the database okay so as a user let's say i want to access the data inside the database so i am the user because of course someone is going to access this data right so it's going to be the user who will access this data now to access this data and the database the user will need of course database management system because without dbms we cannot communicate with the database all right so we will require database management system to communicate with the data and the database okay now there are two ways of doing this first 
the user can directly access the data inside the database using structured query language okay so the user can either directly uh, access the data inside the database using uh, structured query language through the database management system but what if the user does not know structured query language will he not be able to access the database of course he will be right we only need to uh, access an interface right so user will need an interface which is usually a website or an application okay a software application so the user can communicate with this interface this interface will then communicate with the database management system and database management system will then communicate with the data inside the database and then the response will also come in the same way it will go to the dbms the dbms will then communicate this with the interface and the interface will then respond to the user right if i'm trying to access the data from the database so if i'm trying to access the data from the database the database will first communicate with the dbms dbms will then communicate with the interface or the app and then app will respond to the user but when the user is directly communicating with the database through database management system what will happen the database will respond to the database management system and the database management system will directly respond to the user all right so this is how a user can access the database either directly through the structured query language by using the dbms and structured query language or the user can access a website or an application through which they can use the dbms to access the data from the database i hope that this was clear now let's understand this with the help of amazon's shopping site okay let's take that example what happens on amazon on amazon people upload their businesses okay and then other people access the data on the amazon's site right so there are two users here first user that is user 1 is the vendor or the business correct and user 2 is the customer who is trying to purchase some items from the amazon's website right what happens on amazon actually there's a website or there's an application wherein we see multiple products and we can purchase those products from amazon that is online shopping okay so the vendor or the businesses they upload or store their data inside amazon's database okay and then the customer they access or we can say read that data from the database now how exactly can vendors upload their data on the database do they need to write the sql queries of course not right the vendors or the businesses they first register with amazon as a business okay so first step is registration and this happens on amazon's seller site okay there's an amazon seller site wherein we can register as a business now while registration we need to input some data right what kind of data we need to uh, register with our name then our email address and a registered a mobile number that will be registered as our registered mobile number okay there must be some more information but i'm not sure about it i've just visited the amazon seller site and these are the uh, basic details that we require to um, you know sign up as a, a vendor or a business with amazon right so when we are inputting all of these details that is the name email address the mobile number where exactly is this getting stored it is getting stored inside the amazon's database so this is the interface that the businesses are using to communicate with the amazon's database right this is an interface we do not need to write sql queries to store the data inside amazon's database we just need to fill this registration form and then our data automatically gets stored inside amazon's database right then the businesses can upload their data their products etc the prices description etc on the uh, on their site 
all right and all of that data gets stored inside different tables of amazon's database all right so let's say all of these details are getting stored in the vendor table of amazon's database right now when we register as a customer what happens when we sign up as a customer again we need to fill a registration form therein we have our name email address and a mobile number that will be used as a registered mobile number to sign up as a customer again all of this data is getting stored in another table maybe let's say a customer table inside the amazon's database right so we are accessing amazon's database but only through an interface maybe a website or an application amazon's application or amazon's website all right so after we've registered as a customer what do we do we request for different products so here we are reading the data from the database all right so now we're not writing any queries any sql queries we are simply using their website right so if a user cannot directly access a database any database by using sql queries then they can simply use some kind of interface some kind of software application or a website to access that data inside the database all right i hope that this was clear okay so what happens on amazon amazon is a shopping site wherein a lot of products are registered by the businesses then these products are accessed by the customers right so all of this data is getting stored inside the amazon's database the businesses store their data inside the database and the customers read that data from the database only using an interface not through structured query language but by using the interfaces provided by amazon okay i hope that this was clear in the next video we will discuss the characteristics and advantages and disadvantages of dbms if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with as many people as you can you know looking at your comments makes me very happy so please share your thoughts about this video in the comment section below subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching